Mentoring is a term that has come into widespread use as people realize the necessity of young folks having role models. Today on Austin Faith Dialogue, we'll learn how this service is being offered to youthful offenders. Please stay with us. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, welcoming you to this edition. And today we're going to be focusing upon a particular ministry of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, and that is the Community Mentoring Network. It has to do with outreach to youthful offenders at the Gardner Betts Juvenile Justice Center. And in order to help us understand this and to appreciate just exactly how special this ministry is, we have with us the director of that community mentoring network, Bob Sanborn, who is a VISTA worker assigned to the city here this year. Yes. We welcome you, Bob. Thank you. We also have Leela Hackett, who is a member of the board that oversees that work and also is a mentor with one of the young people in the program. Yes. And we welcome you, too. Thank you. And I'd like to say that um, when I hear the word mentor, Bob, I hear, I think of coaching. Yes. <clears throat> An adult who coaches a young person in a way that uh, is important in that young person's development. And you're into sports. What, what does the coaching mean here as far as uh, this kind of ministry is concerned? Well, what we try to do is um, through providing the youth with uh, mentors, as you said, it acts as a coach, someone that could help them with uh, coping skills, someone to teach, someone to be their friend, maybe to offer um, discipline at times as far as offering positive advice. And um, we feel that the mentors act just like a coach to the, to the youth in the program. All right, well, let's visualize this for a moment because I understand that it is Gardner Betts Juvenile Justice Center, which is the place that these youthful offenders are residing while they're uh, undergoing their rehabilitation, and that the rehabilitation somehow is not complete oftentimes without some kind of outside resource, who can, a person that can come in and, um, and coach in the way you're talking about. How, how, who are, let's start with who are the youthful offenders. Let's give some definition of that. Um, the youthful offenders from Gardner Bats are kids between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed a first time offense. Uh, none of these kids have been in front of the judge before. Um, the small misdemeanors like um, shoplifting, truancy, um, uh, vandalism possibly and uh, what we try to do with that is match them with the role models and um, try to try to offer them support through mentoring. Mm -hmm. So these are not hardened criminal young people? No, we're trying to, um, we consider ourselves a program of crime prevention that we get the child before they get further into the juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Leela, you are one of these mentors, these, one of the adults that comes in and, and works with. Uh, you, you have someone that you're working with now. How, who, who are, how, how do mentors come about? How, do you, uh, how did you happen to get involved in the program? Well, I got involved with it. First of all, I heard the announcement on KNLE quite often, and then I saw an ad. And so I called and responded to it. Okay. And this is about a year ago, a little over a year. Okay. Over the public media, you learned the about public it. The public media, right. Okay. But a lot of people hear those, uh, those announcements, but they don't respond the way you did. What, what led you in particular to make the response? Well, it had to do with the youths. And I am a strong proponent that we need to give our time to the youngsters. And I just felt I wanted to get involved. Because uh, you've got a commitment to youth. Yes, I do. Okay. And um, how long have you been mentoring your mentee? My current mentee since mm -hmm. January of this year. Okay. So you're, you've had about three months of that experience. Yes. And can you see that it's made 
a difference? I believe it has. Um, in talking with his guardians, which is his grandparents, they feel it has definitely made a positive influence. And the feedback that they receive from the school and with the counselor, mm -hmm. everything has been very positive. He looked forward to, I have a little boy this time, and he looks forward very much to coming and interacting with me. Okay. How old is the lad? He's nine. I mean, he's ten. I'm sorry. So he's really young. He is very young, yes. And how often do you see him? Well, I've seen him uh, up to Sunday, but I try to see him every other week and do something with him. Every other week? Yes. Or every, uh, a couple of times a month? Right. And yeah. actually, we also have phone calls that we make to each other. Okay. Uh, she mentioned some of these activities. Get, spill that in a little bit more, Bob, about what other mentors do with the young folks. Um, we try to encourage free activities among our uh, mentors with their mentees. Our motto is the mentor is the gift and not his wallet, or his or her wallet. And um, The mentor is the gift. And not and, their wallet. And not their wallet, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, want, we want the mentor to spend quality time with the youth as um, not just to take them to a movie where they sit and not say a word to each other for two hours and walk out and, and they're like, well, I spent you know two hours with my mentee. We want them to spend quality time talking, um, maybe going out and uh, taking them to their job, maybe you know to strike an interest that they may not know they have. Mm -hmm. um, go out and get a library card with the kid. You know, try to try to uh, show them different things that maybe they're not seeing themselves. And okay, so you're talking about taking the young person out of the detention facility into the community. They, do you have that? Uh, time and that privilege to do that? Well, the youth in our program, they are not detained at Gardner Bats. They're, you know, they, they live with their parents and at their home. And um, our mentors meet with their mentees two to three times a month. And usually the mentors go and pick up the mentee from their household. Oh, and I see. All yes. right. So it, it's, uh, it's different than a prison would be. I mean, it's, yes. this is not a reform school sort no, of thing. No, it's okay. not. Okay. Well, thanks for clearing that up because uh, I think the public perception may be that uh, these youthful offenders are spending time, doing time, and they're actually, uh, how, how, how much time do they spend at Gardner Bats? Well, they meet with their probation officers. Um, I'm not sure if it's weekly or monthly, but um, I, they have some commitments through the court, and um, I'm not... I think Margaret would be better answering that question, how long the kids okay. are. In the, in the second half of the show, we're going to have a volunteer coordinator from Travis County to maybe yes. pick up on that. All right, let me just ask you one other question, Lila, about your experience. You, um, you say that the young person looks forward to seeing you. Yes. And you just don't go to the movies and sit there and passively pass the time. No, we don't. Yeah. We spend time playing basketball, okay. uh, playing board games, just talking about books, just talking about things that are of interest to him, what he's been doing since the last time I saw him. Mm -hmm. We talk about school, about his subjects, what's important to him, what he likes. Um, he's into art. He likes drawing pictures, so we talk about the type of pictures that he's drawn and why. Now, the word mentor oftentimes has had an educational meaning where you have, a, say, an older person working with a younger person uh, to coach them in their algebra or their uh, history or whatever. You're not actually doing academic kinds of things in this regard. No, right now, since our relationship is so new, I'm taking the time to get to know my mm -hmm. mentee really mm -hmm. well, to build up that trust because I think that's important. Okay, trust. Mm -hmm. These young folks are frequently missing trust. Yes, they are. Why is that? Um, I think a lot of the, the youth in our program have had a lot of letdowns in their lives, um, maybe promises that were never that never came through. And so what we try we don't try uh, we try to tell our mentors to not go over and and right away make all these promises and meet with them six times a month and and talk with them every day because you know maybe that next month they may not have that kind of time to spend with them. So we're trying, we, we try not to um, give them, uh, build 
build up all this excitement with the men mentee and make all these promises and then have them not come through and then the child will be let down again. Yeah. When you say that, I, I know of instances and uh, it's not just fathers who do this, but oftentimes you, you associate it with fathers who say to their kids, well, I will be there and then don't show up if, if the family's separated. And are the other where uh, other instances where the youngsters feel like they're they're wondering what what and who they can depend on. Yes. And uh, so so you don't want to overpromise. No, we. You don't, don't want to give them the sense that uh, this mentor is going to be their be all and end all. It's a limited kind of relationship, but it sounds like the most important thing is to be dependable in that. Regard. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, we we try to. Uh, keep the mentors, uh, <clears throat> well, they will not just go there and, and take over the parent's role. We want them to be a part with the parent as just being a friend, a friend to the child and mm -hmm. not taking over the parental role. Yeah. What, what is your relationship to this particular child's family? Um, I've developed a friendship with them also. We talk about, you know, my mentee. Mm -hmm and just discuss different things and we try to work together because to me I'm like an extension of a circle of friends mm -hmm. beside his parents and beside the school teacher and his friends at school I'm part of that circle so it's important that what I do has a positive impact on what they're doing I see. also. Do they kind of wonder about you when you first came on the scene? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean how, did, we, how, somehow, how did they know you were coming and what, what kind of introduction that they have to your relating to the child in this way. Okay, we met at the um, training session where the um, mentors were there for an orientation about the program okay. and we had an opportunity to meet the children and get to interact with several children at that time mm -hmm. and their parents. And so somehow we just started talking and we really... Okay, so there is kind of a, an initial get-together with the parties involved Yes. And that's where the introductions take place. Yes, we have, um, at our training session, we have what we call a mixer where we, after the mentors are briefed about uh, the program, that, and the, also while the mentors are being briefed, the mentees are, ta are being talked to downstairs, and then we bring them both together and we play games, and there's a lot of interaction that goes on. So there's kind of a larger social group that's involved. In other words, the, the various mentors know that they're in it with others, and the mentees see other young folks who are involved. Yes. Kind of a community sort of thing that takes place apart from the individual work that you do. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think in the second half we're going to have a chance to learn more about that training and how volunteers are recruited and so on. But, uh, Leela, I want to thank you for being with us in this first half. Thank you. It's been a real help to have you here. And, we hope that you folks will stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back after this break on Austin Faith Dialogue. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue, where today our subject is the Community Mentoring Network, an outreach of Austin Metropolitan Ministries uh, with youthful offenders at the Gardner Betts Juvenile Justice Center. We're being joined this half hour by Margaret Owens, who is a Director of Volunteers for Travis County 
and uh, for the uh, juvenile aspect of that, mm -hmm. and as well as Bob Sanborn, who's with us the first half. And as the director of uh, the program through Austin Metropolitan Ministries, Margaret, you've had a chance to work with Bob here. What, what's that been like? What, what's it like to be involved with this church-related it's a wonderful collaboration. Uh, we've had it for a number of years. Well, actually, the program has been in effect for about two years on a, on a very strong, higher level. And um, it's worked out quite well. Uh, as a result of our working together, we've been able to pair over 100 young people. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Okay, so that's the number that you've talked about. That, has that been since you've been here, Bob, or started before you came? Uh, the program started in June of 95, I believe, and um, since then we've matched 123 mentors and mentees. Okay. And I think oftentimes the success of these programs is measured in terms of how many offenders uh, repeat. Mm -hmm. Recidivism, I guess, is That's the word right. for it. Yes. What, what's been the record in that regard? Well, of those young people that we've been able to pair with positive role models, about 83% do not reoffend. So I think this, this is probably one of the most successful programs that we have in place at Juvenile Court. And why is it successful? I, for the most part, I think uh, the young people uh, are desiring attention and having uh, positive attention is, is what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the whole intent is to help them make better choices and that's what the, the adults do. They help them um, learn about things that they haven't been exposed to in the past. Mm -hmm. um, an example would be things that we take for granted the kids have not been exposed to. Uh, a simple trip t from our department across town you know, may have been something that has been out of their reach. So just by going for a car ride can offer mm -hmm. lots of opportunity for children. What we're suggesting is that, that uh, the adults not spend money, as was mentioned earlier, but involve them in things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, going grocery shopping or, or if they're doing their laundry, why are you putting these colors together versus those colors? Basic life skills hmm. that the young people can learn. So what you're doing is encouraging them to spend a little time with the mentors in their daily rounds. Exactly. To just see how life is lived in another way than they may be used to. Exactly. Yes, we had... Um we had mentors that um, took their mentees to the Home Depot to help them put a deck on the back of their house. And, you know, uh, the story that came back to me was when he took the mentee to the Home Depot, the kid was just so overwhelmed by this huge store this, with all these tools and never saw anything that big in his life and a, a store that just solely had tools. And, like, for, for us, that's, you know, who, we think of the Home Depot, it's just another store. and. and you know, uh, we, you know, it doesn't get us excited. If anything, it'll get us miserable because we have to, you know, we're thinking, oh, we got to get tools, we got to go fix right, this. Right. But just looking at it from a different standpoint. Yeah, the mentee was just so overwhelmed by the store and all these tools and these uh, yeah, plywood, yeah. and the mentor and the mentee worked together on building a deck on, okay. on his house. Okay. So they took another step of actually doing the construction together and learning some skills that way. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you got some other stories that come to mind as far as uh, the kind of activities that have made a difference? And well, we had one young person who wanted to, to find a job and um, not knowing that uh, the application had to be filled out correctly without any scratch marks out of it. And so they were able to work through that. And they did some role playing, you know, with the, the, the mentor being the employer and that sort of thing. Um, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And so, again, these are life skills that these young people are learning so that they not only work for that day or that period of time, but these are skills they can learn and use for the rest of their lives. You know, I, as, as you talk, I, I think of the, the places that mentors have served for others in other professions, mm -hmm. uh, other ways of life that um, seems a little far afield, but I remember Jonathan Edwards, the great American uh, theologian and preacher, and he would have young preachers come in and live at his house. Mm -hmm. And uh, housing wasn't that available <laughs> in those days, I guess, anyway. But it was, it was just a way of, of seeing how life as a pastor was lived mm -hmm. and following him through the rounds. And 
and that in the latter years, people working in uh, professional settings, doctors, uh, mm -hmm. uh, business people, talk about needing a mentor. Right. And needing somebody who knows the, the tricks of the trade or the, the, the ropes. And right. it's applying that, it seems to me, in a way with youth who may be starved mm -hmm. for opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just to see and do things that maybe the rest of us take for granted. And is that kind of... I, I'm piecing together, I guess, what you're saying in, in regards to the way this process works. Our kids need, or they are, they are desiring, positive attention. Uh, it may very well be that mom is working two jobs and there may be an absent, you know, parent, okay. a male from the home. That may or may, or may not be the case. Uh, there, uh, there are lots of myths about, you know, who our kids are. One is, you know, they're from East Austin. They're not. They're from all over the city. Okay. Uh, another is that these kids, well, one of the things that we're trying to do is help kids celebrate life, celebrate accomplishments. If a child is making a C versus a D, we need to celebrate that. We need to be very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe the next six weeks, uh, that grade uh, would be a B. But it's, it's very important uh, to let the kids know that if you're a volunteer, these people are not being paid to spend time with the child. Mm -hmm. So it's real important for the, for the young people to know that this person is spending time with me because they want to. Out of the goodness of their heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. And actually the gift is in the giving. Mm -hmm. You know, our mentors come forward and they say, I want to give back or I want to give, spend time with the child. But the stories we get back is that their lives have been enriched as a result of their giving to someone else. Okay, I'm, I'm beginning to feel the need here to, for viewers who are looking at this and may sense a call that mm -hmm. they like to work with youth or have a com compassion for young people and that kind of need, how they, how they go about letting their interests be known. Uh, why don't we have you start on that, Bob? Um, a lot of the mentors on their applications will put down that, um, you know, I had a positive childhood growing up and I want to give some of that to a youth. Or it would be on the other side is that I was a troubled child and I had mentors in my life okay. that helped mm -hmm. put me on the right track. So I want to give back what was given to me. So we get mentors from both sides of the pictures mm -hmm. that um, offer, offer support to the youth. Now you're at the Austin Metropolitan Ministry Office, the number that we have shown well, a couple of times on the show, the 472-7627 yes. phone number is the way they can reach you and talk to you and learn more about this. Yes. Okay. And how do you go about finding folks otherwise besides people calling in? Um, we recruit through uh, the Chronicle, the Statesman. We try to get articles in there. Um, we've had publicity through um, the major news stations in town, and we've had also publicity through Travis County Television. And um, we recruit through the school social work at the University of Texas. So you have students doing this? Yes, we do. Uh -huh. Houston Tillotson, St. Edwards, do they also? Uh, yes, we've had some response through, through the, uh, both those colleges, yes. And what about congregations? Do you... um, <clears throat> when I came to the program, uh, the volunteer coordinator um, that was before me was having problems getting mentors throughout the co through the congregation. Is that right? Yes, he wasn't getting a good response. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I came on, I just automatically um, did not work through the congregations. I went outside the congregations, and mm -hmm. we're trying to get ourselves back into the congregations. Now I see. Yeah, you'd expect that that would be one of the places. But what's been your experience as far as how volunteers come about, uh, Margaret? Um, volunteers come um, from word of mouth. There's been, a per there's been someone who's been a part of the mentoring program or they heard about it, so they pass it on to someone else. Um, our greatest need is for male mentors. Uh -huh. So I, I really want to say that because most of our clientele are males between the ages of, for this particular program, between the ages of 10 and 15. Hmm. And again, the children that are part of this diversion program are first-time offenders. They're on the front end of the juvenile crime cycle as opposed to the middle or the back end. This is the best time to make an impact or have some influence 
on these young people and that's why our success rate has been so high is because we're working with kids on the front end. Catching them early. Exactly. Uh, I think your official title is uh, Volunteer Coordinator for the Travis County Juvenile Justice Center. Or volunteer court? Coordinator for Travis County Juvenile Court. Court. So that means that out of the court system, mm -hmm. as the judge determines what happens next, mm -hmm. you're there to help make a, a link to any volunteers that are or some program like this to, to get the young folks into a, a mentoring relationship. Exactly. Again, the children have not been detained. They're, they live in the community. Mm -hmm. And these are kids that we see in the stores, in the library, I mean, any, in your churches. These are kids who live in the community who've made a mistake, and we're trying to help them make better choices mm -hmm. with regard to the decisions that they're currently making. Uh, is there a juvenile court judge, or there, there's, there's more than one? Actually, the department is supervised by the, the district judges who are elected officials, in addition to the county judge, Bill Alshar. Okay. And then um, under that umbrella is our chief, Estella Medina, who is our chief probation officer. Okay, so these, these are the people who make the determination as to what kind of uh, response is made to an offender in regard to whether they are, um, I mean, do you, do you find young people of, of that age actually put into a retention center as distinct from this garden? Oh, yes. Desk? I mean, we have young people uh, between the ages of 10 to 17 who are detained at juvenile court. Um, and we invite the public to come and see what happens there. I'll be happy to, to facilitate that. But yes, that is, in fact, it's called a detention center, and I guess in, in adult terms, it would be the jail for okay. Travis County. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a need in itself, isn't it? And yes. you have volunteers working with you in that regard. We do. We, we certainly do. We had over 700 volunteers last year, and we're looking to have more volunteers come in this year. Again, the kids do need the attention. Mm -hmm. They need someone to, to listen to what their issues are. Uh, a lot of times volunteers want to talk about themselves or what's going on with them. The kids have a real need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to encourage is their uh, ability to listen and offer uh, advice from the standpoint of their own personal life experiences. Okay. In the minute that we have left, I, <clears throat> I want to say that uh, I think this particular program today is one that speaks to the heart. In a, in a really compelling way. And uh, Bob, I know you're a volunteer. A VISTA worker is basically through yes. the AmeriCorps. So you know what it means to ask for volunteers since you're one yourself. Yes, yes. And you're here in Austin for balance of the year and we want to thank you for your service. Thank you very much. And for, for, for your being here with us today to, to interpret that. Margaret Owens, uh, thank you for your coming and uh, please take our regards back to the folks at the county and express our appreciation for their service. I will. I'd like to thank you folks for looking in and invite you to be with us on next week's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. And peace be with you.